In this video, I'll talk about the inertia tensor and how um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors are used to find the principal axes of a rotating body. So um, in the previous video, we talked about how um, an axis of rotation was a principal axis if when the body rotates about it, the angular momentum and the angular velocity are parallel. So let's consider the case that all three axes in the Cartesian coordinate system are principal x, y, and z. Then we'll have a diagonal matrix so that if the angular velocity is just in the x direction, then we have that the angular momentum is i, x, x, omega, and same for the y and z directions. So x, y, and z are principal axes. Now, notice that in this case, we have that the angular momentum equals the angular velocity multiplied by a scalar rather than a vector. In other words, we have the equation L equals the inertia tensor times angular velocity, where both are vectors, equals some scalar function times the angular velocity. This is what's known as an eigenvalue equation, where lambda is the eigenvalue, and the angular velocity in its new form is the eigenvector. How do we solve this to find the principal axes of a rotating body? Well, we have that the inertia tensor times the angular velocity is equal to lambda times the angular velocity, which means that the inertia tensor times the angular velocity minus lambda times the angular velocity equals zero, which means that if we represent lambda as lambda times the identity matrix, which here I will call one, so we don't get it mixed up with the inertia tensor, then we have that I minus lambda times the identity matrix times the angular velocity equals zero. Now from linear algebra, we know that there are non-zero solutions for this matrix, whatever it is, only if its determinant is zero. So we can solve that by expressing it like so. We have i x x minus lambda, i y x, i z x, i y y minus lambda, i z y, i z z minus lambda, because remember the lambdas are only where the ones would be in the identity matrix except actually it's the determinant of that. Then we'll solve the resulting equation determinant of the matrix equals zero for the value of lambda. Because the matrix is three by three, we'll have three possible solutions for lambda because this equation will be cubic in lambda. And just to show you what that equation looks like, here it is. So we've got a lambda cubed, a lambda squared, and a lambda to the first power. Now, hopefully when you're solving this, you'll either have real numbers or fewer terms, because that's a lot of terms. Anyway, we'll end up with three eigenvalues for this matrix, which we'll call lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three. Now, it is possible that two of these are the same. That's okay. The next step is, now, for each eigenvalue, we plug it into the original matrix equation, and then we solve for the new form of omega. The eigenvectors are the unit vectors in the direction of each new version of omega. That is, each direction that the object can rotate about and have the angular velocity and the angular momentum be parallel. So these new eigenvectors are our new principal axes, or the unit vectors in the direction of the principal axes. So let's call the new angular velocity omega prime. I should have done that before. Remembering that i times the original omega equals lambda times the new omega, where omega prime is defined in terms of the new principal axes, we 
have that i prime, i defined in terms of the new principal axes, is just the diagonal matrix of the three eigenvalues. What if two of the eigenvalues are the same? Then we'll have one uniquely defined principal axis, let's call it d1, and the requirement will just be that e2 and e3 can be any pair of axes in the plane orthogonal to e1. This might happen in the case of an object that is axially symmetrical. Doesn't matter which pair of axes we choose in this direction, um, the situation will still be the same. So, when can we not diagonalize the inertia tensor? Um, making the inertia tensor into a diagonal matrix form is called diagonalizing it. We can only do this if the inertia tensor is real symmetric. We can only do this if the inertia tensor is real symmetric. This means that two elements that are mirrored diagonally from each other must be each other's complex conjugates. If both of these are real numbers, which is the case with most of the physical objects we'll be finding the inertia tensor for, then they just must equal each other. This is certainly true in any of the situations we've considered where i, y, x is the integral of negative m, y, x, and i, x, y is the integral of negative m, x, y, because for normal coordinate values, x and y, multiplication is commutative, and so they will always equal each other. So in any situation that, in, in like classical mechanics that we'll be using this in, the matrix will be symmetric, and we will be able to find the eigenvalues and diagonalize the inertia tensor.